Hi, my name is John Grenham, still, and I'm going to talk to you now uh, about other features of my website, johngrenham.com. In previous videos, I've talked about, um, focused on the initial map that you see when you enter a surname into the site. So let's just have a look at that. I pick the surname Cregan, and what you get is a map showing parish by parish where there were Cregans in mid 19th century Ireland in Griffith's valuation. Um, and if you hold your mouse over the, the, the marker, um, you'll get details of the name of the parish, the date of the survey, the number of households, and so on. There's more detail. If you zoom in here on the, the, the table below, you can get more detail. You can, you can go back to the original records. But as well as that map, there are also four other maps listed here. So Cregan births mapped 1864 to 1913. Cregan 1901 to 19, um, 1901 census, Cregan 1911 census, and Cregan Roman Catholic baptisms. So I'm going to talk about those now. Um, first of all, let's have a look at the, the birth maps. Okay, as you can see, it's quite a different look to the householders map. That's because this is a Google map and the other is a Google geo chart. We won't get technical about it. The main difference is that you can click through this map. You can actually click on the markers, get a link, and it'll take you back to the original records. Um, there are some peculiarities about this. There are always peculiarities. I mean, for example, why 1864 and 1913? Okay, well, 1864 is easy. 1864 is when births began to be registered in Ireland. So there are no births, state birth registrations before 1864. 1913, well, the, the data set I'm using um, was published in 2014, and they picked a cutoff point of 100 years, so 1913 was the cutoff point. Okay, that's one peculiarity. There are other peculiarities. Um, let me show you what happens if you click on one of the markers. So, for example, 120 births in Newcastle West. Um, let me see, 36 births in Listowel. Let's have a look at Listowel, a nice place. Okay. You click on that and you get taken to Cregan Berts in Listowel. Okay. And you get, uh, you can sort it by date, you can sort it by um, by relevance as, as they do it. And you can go in and look at the original um, the original record. And there you have the, all the original records Johanna Cregan, a carpenter's daughter. Um, and Peculiarities. The second peculiarity about the map is that you may notice a difference in the numbers. The number here says 36. The number here says 79. Why is that? Well, first of all, this set goes right up to 1919. So there are six extra years. That's one reason. So there are those extra births involved. The other reason is a little more technical. It's that from 1900, the birth records on this site, on irishgenealogy.ie, include the mother's maiden name. So if we go down to the bottom, you can see here, all Patrick Scamblin, mother's birth name Cregan, Thomas Hogan, mother's birth name Cregan, okay, Ellen O'Sullivan, mother's birth name Cregan. By default, the site searches for all surnames in a record. So if the mother's surname is there and it's Cregan, it will return those as well. And there is no way, as far as I can see, to actually limit it only to the birth um, infant's name. So that's that's the reason, the, the main reason for the discrepancy in numbers between what you'll see on the map and what you'll see when you go to irishgenealogy.ie. Um, as well as the click through maps here, um, there's also a list of other spelling variants of the surname that occur in the birth records. So Cregan has 837, so it's by far the most common, you can see that. But Cregan with two E's is also quite common, but not in the same areas. So they're mainly in Mohill, in Leitrim. Um, Cregan, as you go down the list, they get less common. Um, that's, they're dotted around in various places until you get to C-R-E-I-G-A-N which is where there's one in Belfast up there. You can just about see the red dot and one in Dungannon just there. 
you can just see it about see the red dot as well. So the idea of this, this happens with all the maps. It's to show um, just how variable surname spelling was and how it varied even at the same period, um, just in different areas. So there was no standardization of Irish surnames um, in recording official births. It was whatever the local registrar thought the name should look like in English. And believe me, some of them had very peculiar ideas. Okay, speaking about that, there is uh, the question of what exactly, let's go back to the originals, what exactly are these districts that we're talking about? So you can see there are various numbers here. These are the numbers. This is a, a, a table reproducing what you're looking at here in graphic form. Okay, but what are they? Okay, these are poor law unions, superintendent registrar's districts. They were interchangeable. Um, these were the main um, geographical districts used to register births, deaths, and marriages in Ireland from 1864, actually up to the present. Um, it's kind of hair-raising to think that the poor law is at the root of the, the civil registration system even today. Um, all those workhouses and, and paupers um, are still buried, the archaeological remains are buried in the, the registration system. Um, but they're quite big, okay? Let me give you, show you um, another part of the site where you can get it. Okay, this is a map of the poor law unions. So we looked at Listol, you can see it's quite a, there are 138 or so um, poor law unions. There are 32 counties, so you can see there, there would be an average of maybe four poor law unions per county. The main point is that they go across county boundaries, they go across parish boundaries. <clears throat> They're um, used as they, uh, they were based on, on workhouses, the, the catchment area that would produce enough taxation to support a local a workhouse. That was the, the criterion used to create them, um, which means you need to be careful. So for example, Waterford registration district or poor law union down here um, takes in a lot of what is South County Kilkenny. So you may have Kilkenny ancestors who are registered in the registration district of Waterford. And these poor law unions, they're the areas that appear on irishgenealogy.ie and therefore they're the areas that appear in uh, the maps. There is a way of using this map to get more detail about locations. So for example, if we click on Listowel, you'll get a complete list of all the, the places that appear in Listowel Poor Law Union, um, divided by parish, by barony. And this is probably the most important if you're trying to decipher a birth record, the registrar's district. There was this perfect hierarchy where the local registrar collected the records um, in a book, passed the book to his superior, who was the superintendent registrar, and the superintendent registrar was the head of the poor law union. So if something is registered in Bally Longford registrar's district, then it must be from one of these places here. And sometimes you look at this Bunarudi, if that's how you pronounce it, um, written on a, a birth registration, and you cannot for the life of you make out what it is, except that there's a B and an N and maybe an R in there. If you look at this list here, it's a way of deciphering those place names. Okay, I wandered well away from the maps, but um, I think you get the point. They, again, these markers are centered on a particular townland in the poor law union. As with the householders um, parishes, um, these are centered on townlands. Because most of the poor law unions are based around a large market town, um, that tends to be the, the place where I stuck the marker in, got the latitude and longitude, and connected it to the, the list of householders. Um, a list of, uh, I beg your pardon, list of births, okay? Um, and they, um, so they're geographically, precise enough in terms of identifying the center or the, the, at least the economic center of the poor law union. Um, but these aren't, they are not geographically, if you click on this, for example, 
three births in Boyle. That doesn't mark, mean that there were three births in the town of Boyle. It means there were three births in the Poor Law Union of Boyle, which, as we can see from this, the Poor Law Union of Boyle is quite a big area. There are quite a lot of places in Boyle. Um, it takes in parts of South County Sligo, as well as Roscommon. So um, again, as in everything, and particularly with genealogy, you need a bit of skepticism looking at this. It's a useful way of visualizing where things are, of clicking through to see the original records, um, but it's not perfect, nothing is.